to have or not to have. The definition of ready is such a polarizing topic that I just love to take part in this discussion. I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome! Today I will explain what is the definition of ready, how to create it, when to use it and how not to use it. I will also explain the controversy over it in the Agile world. This episode is sponsored by Miro. Miro is my favorite whiteboard, wild board, that can help you take remote collaboration to the next level. And now, let me tell you a story about two teams. Team Carpe Diem and Team Planner. Team Carpe Diem has a loose approach to refinement and sprint planning. Sometimes they would have them and sometimes they won't. Oftentimes they would take a quick look at the stories during the planning and add them to the sprint. Hashtag YOLO. As a result, they would often have a lot of back and forth with the product owner, the designer and whatever stakeholder they need. Just check the Jira tickets for the amount of comments they have there. Because of course, who would make a call to clarify the missing pieces? Therefore, Team Carpe Diem is faced with countless hours of back and forth and waiting for the reply. All in all, there's a lot of unfinished stories in the sprint, tons of spillover and rework, some blaming and unhappy people. And now, let's take a look at the team planner. This team is careful about the stories they put in their sprint. After a few failed sprints, they have decided to write a checklist to remind themselves what a common story should look like to be allowed to be added to the sprint. This is called a definition of ready. They use it as a guidance while refining the story. As a result of an increased understanding of the common pitfalls, they improved the refinement process to avoid the last minute additions and frustration. What's more, to avoid the disaster to reappear, they decided to schedule refinement and sprint planning as a recurring event. Of course, the improved process is not entirely thanks to the definition of ready, but it was an important step that helped them stop and rethink the way they prepared stories. Fellow Agile practitioners that I know and follow are divided in the opinion about it. So if you look it up, you will most likely find a lot of opinions to ditch it and do it with a splash. So, where do I stand about it? Would I advise a team to create a definition of ready? It depends. The context matters. Is the team new or have they been working together for a while? Do they collaborate closely with the PO and the designer or are they strangers that mainly interact on Jira tickets? I don't think most of the teams need a definition of ready, like they need a planning or a refinement. In fact, I think most teams don't need it at all. Moreover, <laughs> I actually hope that even the teams that use it, they will ditch it over the time. But before we go into more controversies and more dangers of definition of ready, let's take a look at what it actually is. And I will show you how to create it collaboratively, of course, with your team. One, schedule a meeting with all the parties involved. The developers, the PO, the QAs, the designer. If you have an architect, invite them in. Anybody who collaborates on the process of implementing a story. And make sure that they go into kind of negotiation of those different points of the definition of ready. Two, create a mirror board. We all know we are working almost always in remote. The easiest way is to create three rectangles that go one into the other and that can help us define whether we are ready for the idea and then we put stuff in the now or later or maybe never. This can help us to not start with the grandiose ideas and big changes. Let's go step by step. Three, throw ideas. Think about what needs to be defined within a user story for the developers and the QAs to be comfortable with starting working on it. And I intentionally say start working on it and not end working on it because we know how it is. Stuff will emerge and we cannot predict everything. So there will be new knowledge and we just need to deal with it. What you need to have here is what you need to start. Later on, you will anyway have to talk to other people. Sorry, no escape from that. 
and four organize the ideas now let's see some typical topics areas that you would find in a definition of ready by the way this is kind of a cheat sheet that you can copy and paste to give an idea to your team on what needs to be there in the description below you will find my substack article go there open the link subscribe and then you can just copy it from there so what would be the usual suspects for this definition? So let's go back to our template in Miro. For me, the first one would be that outcome is understood. That means that acceptance criteria have been defined and understood by the team. You can have different ways of writing acceptance criteria, different ways of writing your stories. I just write the topic. You with your team should describe what that means. Two, testing is clear. It goes into the acceptance criteria. Some teams use acceptance criteria also for testing. We understand what needs to be done and we have an idea of how to test it. Three, readiness of the design. This is for the developers and designers to talk and agree on some level of readiness here. Let them negotiate and get to a point of mutual understanding. That level can change over time. So we might start with, oh, we want 80%, like 80-20 principle. 80% 80 of the designs to be done because we really don't understand this new feature or you can be at the level that well with some wireframes and idea of what you want there we can already start developing it depends on the team let the developers and the designers define the readiness level for them to be able to start working next dependencies with other teams should be resolved if the story is blocked by another team or a third party we might want to wait for them to finish it before we throw it into our sprint hoping that they will finish on time that of course has some exceptions if we are waiting for another team to do something in the same sprint we might as well just wait for the next sprint but if we are waiting just for one reply from a third party maybe it's possible that it will come in the upcoming days so if the story is small we probably can add it into the sprint up to you how you define it five the story is independent hmm that's also some kind of a utopian for some teams we know how it works as sometimes reality is that the team has a story for backend and a story for frontend. I'm not against anything that works for the team. If they are mocking API calls and want to do some frontend work in parallel with backend, what would be good is to at least create an epic, link the stories. Maybe stories cannot be independent, but they can be linked. So everybody knows what is the group of stories that need to get released together. Ideally, we have a story that describes a given use case. Next is estimated. If applicable, I like to think about estimation as a pinnacle of refinement. We can't estimate what we don't understand, right? So once we get an understanding of what needs to be done, not necessarily how it will be done, the story can be estimated and we will find out if we all understood the same thing about it. For me, estimation is not only about predicting the future, which we know it never works greatly. It's not about defining a deadline. It's also about making sure everybody understands to the same. If we see there are two people in the same team, one gives a three and one gives a 13, then we have a problem with understanding and we need, probably need to spend some time to clarify why the different points, right? If you want to know more about story points and estimating, watch my don't sweat estimations video here and also how to estimate in story points. If you don't estimate because you are into no estimates movement, you might want to find a way of labeling your stories as red in your backlog. And last but not least, from what I consider, and you might consider more or less things, is small enough to fit in one sprint. I put it after estimation because it can give us an idea of whether it's small enough to fit in a sprint or not. This might mean that we want to split it into smaller pieces, or maybe that the story is actually an epic. So it's good that the story is split into sprints, that we have something releasable by the end of the sprint. Otherwise, what's the point of having sprints if our stories are bigger than them, then maybe we will need bigger sprints or we need a new way of splitting the story. And those are topics that I leave you with that you might want to start with in the story in order to be ready. It needs to be applied in a reasonable way. And those are my acceptance criteria for a definition of ready. First of all, let's talk about the team context in which context or a moment the team is and it makes sense to have a definition of ready. One, starting a new team. 
helping them understand what is needed. You can help them create a model user story they should aspire to, yet be aware it is not often gonna be possible to get there. Two, the team gets a new PO, a new designer or a major change. And at that point we want to get to a collaborative understanding of what a good story looks like. The problem there is that the new PO will have their best practices and their biases about that from the past and the team is used to some other practices. So instead of clashing all the time that oh well we should do it this way, oh no, we have always been doing it this way, you know the story, we can come together and start making small compromises on where we want to be right now and also of course if somebody has like a great idea but we are just not ready to implement it yet, we put it in the later next column, right? And three, the example of the team Carpe Diem from the story at the beginning. That team needed some push, needed some change, some stop and think. And this can be a tool that we use from our toolbox. We have many, many more tools and it can be short lived. We can do an experiment to use it only for three months. And now after you get a better idea of what a definition of ready is, let's take a look at the dangers of definition of ready. I read a lot of articles, the view that we shouldn't use it ever, ever. Those are respectable people and they have some valid arguments. So let's hear them out. It's Mike Cohn that talks about the dangers of the definition of ready in his article with the same title. And he compares the definition of ready to a big barley bouncer standing at the door of the iteration. And this is when we let it control what product backlog items can enter the iteration. I never said that we use definition of done on the sprint plan. We used it on the refinement as a guide, right? And what Mike says is actually true when we misunderstand what the definition of ready is and we understand it as a contract we signed with blood instead of it being a guideline that we use to help refine the stories. Martin Dahlmine, sprint goal expert that I value and follow and I had the pleasure to interview him on sprint goals, you can watch the video here. He stands in the dark side of the DOR spectrum with some valid arguments and let's also notice that my stance is like in the middle. I'm neither a product owner, neither a development team, but I usually tend to be more on the side of the development team. And Martin is a product leader. I think that distinction is important in where we stand on that point. And he says that you don't need a definition of ready to stop messy and unclear backlog items from being added to the sprint. And he shares a key observation that I want to underline here. The best teams actively collaborate and work together with their stakeholders to make backlog items clear. They don't point fingers and throw it over the fence by saying it does not meet their definition of ready. As always, the collaboration and the communication are the key factors in whatever we do. However, it just doesn't flourish overnight if you never collaborate and if you don't even know your PO or your designer, it will be hard to create that super high performing team from a group of people. So starting with a meeting where you put all those people in one room and create a guideline, not a contract, can help bring the people closer, use it in this kind of kind way, not the bloodshed way. And that's all for today. I hope you understood a bit better why some people use the definition of ready and find it helpful and why some people ditch it, forget about it and don't want to ever use it again. And that's okay, both approaches are okay depending on your context and the needs and the culture of the company and your habits. Ah, and before we go, I just want to say it doesn't appear in the scrum guide. It's not there. It has been mentioned indirectly at some point, but it's not there anymore. The definition of done is there, but the definition of ready is not. It's not like a, oh, we do scrum, we have to have a definition of ready or mm, we do scrum, we can't have a definition of ready because it's not in the scrum guide. Like there are a lot of complementary practices to scrum that help us work in a better way. And that is all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.